Hello, today we're gonna to showcase a great company called the Blue Lab. They've been around since about 2002. Before then, it was called New Zealand Hydroponics. And we're gonna look at a product called the Guardian. This product will do EC, TDS, PPM, temperature, and PA. Obviously, when you take and change your BNC connectors, you need to calibrate all the time. So it's connected right now to calibrate Blue Lab instruments. Very simple procedure. Here's your pH probe. It measures the volt uh, pressure uh, in your solution. You put it into the seven and push pH cal. Let go. You have the seven. Now you have to direct it in the, in the direction of where you're going to measure. Most plants like acidity, so I'm going to put it in the four. So we rinsed, and now we go for the low, low, low calibration. Uh, so what we're doing right now is a high point and a low point. A high right. point, and now we're taking it down towards acidity. And the high point seven, the low point's four? Four, yes. Pretty standard within the industry. So you're letting the, the probe relax a little bit. Once it stops, push the button once again until you see the cal. Let go. There you are. We are now ready to measure. We have a solution here with both our... You want to rinse first? No, it doesn't really matter. Okay. We have both probes in here, our conductivity probe and our pH probe. Mm -hmm. There we go. As it's settling in and getting a reading. It'll stabilize? It should stabilize. And it looks like on the top, we have an option for EC, CF, TDS, and PPM. Right now we're showing the PPM. Yes, we do. And if you wanted to change PPM 700 to EC, you just push the button until it moves up there. That's EC. Push the button again. It'll change the CS, CF for those Brits. Push the button again, and you can get TDS 500. And that's the same with the temperature. If you don't want Fahrenheit, you can change it over to centigrade right there. Of course, we like Fahrenheit anyway. I'll put it right there. And then also, which is really nice on the Guardian, you can change the brightness by pushing down the button and taking it up to a level 8 or lowering it down to a level 1 and the lighting is green. That's perfect. And one of the nicest features about the Guardian monitor also is the alarm system. You can put your highs and your lows parameters when it comes out of those um, parameters that you put in, you'll, it, it's not audible, but it'll blink to you. And I'll just show you how that works right here. Oh, so it actually tell you when it's moved out of those ranges that you've set. Absolutely. So there's the highs right here. You push the button and you ma manipulate the highs and lows. Temperature for your high, take it on down a bit. And your pH level, take it down, take it up. Push the button again, your lows now. You can change your lows, so you're just putting in the high and low of what you want for your solution. Push save. Then you push on the alarm, that's off. Anything that's out of your preset parameters, it will blink and let you know that you need to uh, step up and do something about your solutions. If you don't want to look at the blinking light, and you're going to take care of it anyway, and I hope you do, you can turn it off, simple as that, and you have your constant read. I'm just back to the regular function. Regular function, indeed. This is the only combo meter I see that has these, that has these features. Um, also, also, we coat the conductivity um, um, cord so that you don't have any interference to your, from any kind of balances that give digital reads. So we're going to showcase a few other instruments from Blue Lab. This is a soil pH meter. And um, the probe is encased. Yes. Correct? In a uh, glass? It's a glass probe is encased inside the shaft here because of, uh, of the nature of the, the medium, your soil. You, you're going to want to do an indentation with the, into your soil. Uh -huh. So that's just to make an indentation. Just to make an indentation. You want to moisten the soil about an hour beforehand with RO water or just pure water. Stick in the probe, 
turn the meter on. Of course, you've already, you have to calibrate it if it's if it's the first time you used it and attached it to your meter. Oh, calibrate okay. it, or else you should calibrate once every 30 times. Okay, once every 30 times. Uh -huh. Got it. Calibrate it. Put it inside the hole. Go get yourself a beer. Drink your beer. Come on back. That gives it about five minutes to take a reading. Turn on the machine again, and you'll get your reading. All Blue Lab meters are uh, turn off after four minutes automatically, so you're not going to be um, wasting your battery. In case you forget, yes. Plus, our meters come with waterproof instructions just in case you lost the box. This is our pH meter. Once again, same thing, four minutes it turns on. Very easy to calibrate like I showed you with the, uh, the Guardian. This is our combo meter, probably our most popular meter. It gives pH, it gives PPM, it gives you a nutrient count, uh, your PPM, and also temperature, which is very important. It has the probe, it has the uh, EC probe on the other side, and once again, it gives you temperature. So, a like, new so it's like the Guardian, it just doesn't have those other bells and whistles. Without the parameter sets and all that. Alarm, et cetera. The alarm. This is the truncheon that... Um, that's one of the favorites. That's yes. one of the favorites. People love. The only reason why we came up with a pin that does PPM is some people like the digital readout compared to the lighting. These are new from Blue Lab, the PPM pin and the pH pin. Um, wonderful tools. They also give temperature. Along can, with can I say something to the growers out there? They're not all pH and PPM pens are alike. No. <laughs> no way. There's a lot out there that do not work well over time. And Blue Lab, obviously we stated before, has quality products that last over time. So if you're into using a pen for PPM or pH balancing, please take a look at these new products by Blue Lab. We have them available at our store, monstergardens.com. And then also we have uh, the solutions. If you're going to be uh, calibrating your own product and cleaning your pH probe, this is a cleaning uh, solution. There's a soft toothbrush on the inside and a couple cups. Like I said in the demonstration, you start with your high point or your pH neutral, your 7. Take it to acidity 4.0. Once you calibrate, you're ready to go. Do it once every 30 times or when you change the adapter. This is your conductivity probe cleaner. <clears throat> Basically, when you're using your probe, whether it be the truncheon or one of the probes from the combo meters, uh, you want to take a reading to make sure you're getting a proper reading. It's going to be a little low if it's dirty. Big thing about probes, you got to keep them clean to make them last. There's a cleaning solution in here. It's a soft abrasive, a little chamois clean cleaner. You'd wipe it really, really well and then rinse like crazy. It's calibrated at the manufacturer in New Zealand, but uh, this is a great way to make sure you're getting a proper reading with your PPM uh, EC Excellent. probes. I would like to explain a few things too, if I get a chance. Um, EC stands for electrical connectivity. Mm -hmm. It measures how many um, solids are dissolved in, the, in, in water salts. CF is mostly used in England. It stands for connectivity factor and all it is is EC times 10. Uh, so for you guys at home when you see recipes online and you see the word CF uh, all you got to do is uh, divide by 10 or vice versa you see EC and you live in England you can multiply times 10. TDS stands for total dissolved solids. Same thing. Uh, it tells you how many solids are dissolved in a solvent. Really and salt, the dissolved salts, right? Correct, yes. the dissolved, dissolved salts, correct. And uh, what happens is that in, in, in Australia and in down under, uh, they use a base of 500. In the U.S., they use a base of 700. So um, you have to be really careful when you go on these websites and you see you know, a recipe with a, with a um, specified uh, connectivity measurement, and you have to make sure that they're, whether they're basing it on 500 or 700, just, to, just so you could be off, you know. Okay. So it's important to make note of that. So if we're in the U.S., what would be the most co common? 700 is the U.S. 700 would be the U.S. and Which obviously would be the PPM essentially. Correct. Okay. And we would be using obviously Fahrenheit here instead of Celsius. I see. And PPM is parts per million. Parts per million, correct. Like the dissolved solids or correct. dissolved solids. In, in essence, it's not truly a parts per million meter, but it it does it is a benchmark that will tell you uh, uh, you can gauge quanti quantitatively gauge how much salts you have dissolved in a nutrient so you can back off or increase. So it is a, it is a pretty accurate measurement. It just won't tell you exactly which nutrients are dissolved into the water, but uh, most solutions they come prepared. Okay. Okay. Another thing I like about this unit is that uh, it's a centralized unit, but with probes that are separate. When you, um, 
when you've had you know 15 years of experience and you try, you bought pretty much every ppm ph meter out in the market you realize that the ph meter is the first thing that goes so when you buy for instance a, a hannah or, or any other unit that comes in two and one combo guaranteed that your uh, ph meter will fail before your ppm meter so now you have a, a failed meter and you have to take it back in for replacement for the for the for your P, uh, ph probe and when that goes in for replacement you have you're left with no meter not even a ppm meter so it's always good to have them separate because if any as, a, you know, as an engineer any any part that would fail first it will be your ph probe in this case it's completely separate you can order one while you still have your temperature and your ppm readouts So if somebody was using this for normal everyday use and they were taking care of it, they're cleaning it once a week when they change the reservoir, how long would these sensors last typically in these units? I would say the conductivity uh, probe should last the, the life of the, of the meter itself. Oh, wow. um, the pH probe, if you take care of them, you clean them, and more importantly, like store you suggested, them store them and keep them wet. They should last at least two years plus. Okay. It's a matter of keeping them clean, keeping them wet, and not breaking them. They are made out of glass. And if you don't have um, typical caliber, if you don't have typical sensor cleaning solution, what would you recommend to be used to use to clean these? Just just plain water. Plain or water. Or plain, plain water. water. Dish soap and a soft um, soft toothbrush, okay. and you can clean the uh, pH probe pr fairly readily. It's it's a it's a glass probe, but it's not that sensitive. I want to make a case point uh, regarding this company. I consider I consider Blue Lab to be the Rolex, the Rolex of, uh, of instruments. But it's not priced like a Rolex. No, it's not priced like a Rolex. It's maybe about 20%, 30% more than you would a regular meter, but it'll last you indefinite. I have a, for instance, I have a case here. I bought this truncheon, which is a PPM meter, back in 99, before the company was called Blue Lab. It was actually called, uh, let's see here, New Zealand Hydroponics. It still works. Uh, and it, uh, it's waterproof, it's a single meter, no calibration needed. And it is very old. Mm -hmm. So we're talking 99, 2000. So this is this meter is over 10 years old. Even the casing, the plastic. I take care of my instruments. Even the, the plastic is has faded with the, uh, you know, being exposed to light, etc. And we've actually used this meter here at the store a few times just to test solutions. So I know that this works. I didn't realize the meter was so old. Yes, it is. So that's that's a clear indicator that Blue Lab products will last over time, especially if you take care of them. It's the Rolex. And I'd like to also suggest that truncheon right there is warranted for five years automatically. The Guardian, which is on for 24-7, for warranted for two years. Can I ask you a quick technical question? Absolutely. What's up with the two-point calibration? Because obviously I've seen meters that only have a single point calibration, usually at the 7.0 level. Um, do you mind just giving me a, a, a you know, explanation of why there's, what's the difference between the one-point calibration and the two-point calibration? Sure. Well, what happens is that the pH is, is, is logarithmical on both ends. And so um, uh, they tend to, uh, instruments tend to, when they, when they tend to go off or skew off uh, their calibration points, it, it, gets, it gets more intense at the, at, the upper, at the upper levels and at the very lower ones. So to, in order to ensure 100% um, accurate calibration, a two-point meter will always be more accurate than a one-point meter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's logarithmical. So you have, uh, um, you have seven neutral, 14 and to zero to zero basically so and it's exponential on both ends so it's, there, uh, it's a calibration of um, a, a point let's say a pH point of of eight and a pH point of nine nine would be ten times yes that of eight so it starts to it starts to climb real high on both ends so you want to get two points a high point and a low point to uh, make sure that uh, it stays in, it stays doesn't skew and also I hear about temperature compensation. Are these products temperature compensating? Yes, they are. The truncheon has a temperature read. It doesn't have a, um, a window so you can see the temperature. With your combo meter and your guardian meter, it takes into consideration temperature before you get the pH read or the, um, or the EC or PPM read. You need to have the, the PPM probe in the solution to get a proper reading for pH if you're looking for, uh, uh, if you have concerns about temperature, because that's your measurement in the um, conductivity probe. The correct temperature should be, uh, I believe, room temperature now. Well, uh, no more than 72. Anything higher than 72, you're going to have, um, you're going to, you're going to cause your roots to be a little bit uh, 
harmed, and that causes all sorts of other problems. When your roots get start turning gray, you track pests, your your stems, your your flowering, everything can go sideways as your temperature goes up. And regarding the calibration temperature, the proper one should be room temperature. No? It should be room temperature. Yeah, you should leave it at room, not in the refrigerator. No, don't store in the refrigerator. So this truncheon is from 1999, and Carlos has been using it weekly since then, but he obviously takes care of his products. Now we just want to show you how quality Blue Lab products are. And it was, uh, back then the company was called New Zealand Hydroponics International. It's, it's the, the very first models came out, um, actually this is number 819, so it was, it was among the first made. This was under the first thousand. Under the first thousand, and um, it had both the the um, the base was 700, and it the first the earliest most sensitive reading was 280, and we are now putting it in a solution, a very weak uh, uh, ppm solution, and we're reading 280 just like uh, actually if you look at here at the, at the the new Guardian that was made recently, if you want to put that on the spotlight mm -hmm. there that says 250, this one was reading 280, so we're talking 30 ppm. Not bad for 12 years. Can I ask you a question real quick, Carlos? Sure thing. How often have you calibrated this unit? Never. So from 1999 till now, which this is 2011. No solutions, nothing. I, I rarely clean it. Yeah. I do, you know, there is a brush. Uh, you, can, you can use a chamois or a, a Q-tip if you want. Uh, my dog, I used to, my dog even passed away already. Um, I had a Dogo Argentino pit bull, and he thought this was his throwing stick, and he bit right here at this point, and he, he broke the water, uh, the water seal, the waterproof seal on here. Looks like you glued it. All I did was take a hot glue gun, <laughs> put a dab on it, pressed it in, 12 years later, still works beautifully. That is a durable piece of equipment. Well, almost 13 now. We're going to work on 13 years. <laughs> that is a durable piece of equipment. This just shows you, folks, here is a Blue Lab product that was created over 10 years ago. It's worth paying the extra $20 and making it last... Okay, years. you might see really cheap dipstick meters that go for like 30, 40 bucks. You know, we're talking a product that's only a hundred dollars. Those 30, 40 dollar products come back all the time. And I'm telling you, if you have a couple extra dollars in your pocket, you're gonna get a product that's not only gonna last you over time, but it's gonna give you an accurate reading over time. And that's what we're essentially doing here. We're taking a reading. Yeah. We want an instrument that's accurate and lasts.